Hey, we're live. You guys ready to do a show? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What a lovely house you've got there. <laughs> Thank you. We think so. <laughs> All right. Here we go. It's just like yours. Live via alphageekradio.com. The Daily Tech News Show is made possible by patrons like you at patreon.com slash acedetect. Thank you. For information on how to contribute, go to bit.ly slash helpdtns. You're on the Frog Pants Studios Network. Audio so good, it's like you're there. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, November 13th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today, in-house... Jason Heiner, editor in chief of Tech Republic, and Lindsay Gilpin, staff writer at Tech Republic. These guys are actually here in LA, so I brought them over and then realized, oh wait, I only have one camera, so they're upstairs. How's it going, you guys? Hey, hey. great to be here. <laughs> Thanks for uh, squeezing in on one camera. There, I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. uh, it's going to be really fun to have you guys here. They are kind of roaming around the country uh, doing some research. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. But I'm excited about the project you guys have kicked off. Awesome. Thank you. We can't wait to talk a little bit about it. All right. Let's uh, get right into the headlines. The Next Web reports Facebook has launched a privacy basics site to help people understand what options they have to protect their privacy while using the social network. The company also has made public their proposed new terms of service, which are written in plain language. Users have until November 20th to provide feedback on terms and conditions, data usage, and cookie policies. And we're going to talk about this a little more after the headlines. Sony is the first of the potential cord cutter TV services to announce they're ready to go. PlayStation View, spelled V-U-E, because why spell it I-E-W, will offer live and on-demand programming from more than 75 channels. Subscribers will need internet and a PS3 or PS4 to watch the programming. Now, Sony does intend to launch an iPad app as well as apps for other devices, they say, but the first devices will be their own. Networks include NBC Universal, Fox, Viacom, and Scripps, but not anything from ABC Disney or Time Warner's HBO. The service will launch an invite-only beta this month in New York, followed by invite-only betas in Chicago, Philadelphia, and Los Angeles, and then Sony intends to launch commercially in Q1 of 2015. Uh, guys, this is kind of a, a big deal. Like, you will just be able to have the internet and get a cable television-like service without paying separately for a cable television install, although you'll have to pay separately for Sony's thing, and we don't know how much yet. Yeah. Yeah, it is a big deal. I mean, cord. I mean, you talk about this cord cutting stuff all the time, and more and more people, um, you know, are, are into it, and uh, you know, have been waiting. I mean, people have been waiting for this kind of thing um, for so long, and finally, in 2014, you know, some the, the ball has kind of been bouncing in, in its direction. I think. You know, you take this and what um, you know, our parent company CBS is doing with uh, you know CBS News and some of its programming as well, and a number of others. It's good stuff. TechCrunch reports the Great Book War of 2014 has ended just in time for the holiday shopping season. Amazon and the Hachette Book Group have agreed on a new multi-year agreement for ebook and print sales. Hachette will set its own prices for ebooks. That's the so-called agency model. But it will receive better terms, in other words, more promotion, when those prices are closer to what Amazon wants via their guidelines. The new prices take effect in 2015, but Amazon will stop messing with Hachette pre-orders and search listings and such right now. So when you go look for Hachette books, they'll be there exactly where you expected them to be. Reuters reports BlackBerry announced its new mobile security and device management platform Thursday, BES 12. BlackBerry Enterprise Server 12 will let companies and government agencies manage Android, iOS, and Windows devices, along with BlackBerry's own products. It will also be able to handle medical diagnostic equipment, industrial machinery, and motor vehicles. Among the partnerships is one with Samsung to combine BlackBerry device management with Samsung's Knox security platform for Android phones. That's scheduled to start sometime in early 2015. BlackBerry also announced partnerships with Salesforce.com and wireless distribution distribution company Brightstar. This seems like what everybody's been wanting BlackBerry to do for a long time. Yeah, it was this is such a smart thing to do and I'm I'm confident 
um, they'll do it well. It's just one of those things they should have done in 2009. You know, um, if they would have done that and and not sort of been so infatuated with being a device maker, um, they would have done this and focused in this direction. You know, I think they wouldn't be in the in the problem in the trouble that they're in. Uh, and, and certainly, it, and, and it would have been a good thing overall for um, you know government and high security networks who really need those kinds of things. And um, and, and you know, right now there's just there's some really a lot of challenges with with mobile security um, because of the lack of these kind of solutions. So, and Samsung Knox and BlackBerry are two of the best. So, you can't blame John Chen though; he wasn't there back yeah. then. And this is kind of the fastest that he could get around to it. So, you got to give him points for like, well, this this is what I need to do. I did it as fast as I could. Uh, yeah. Do you think it is too little, too late though? Yeah, they really are not a leader in mobile device management, which is what this this um you know this sector uh, is um, they're they're a uh, they're coming from behind on this whereas they used to be really great you know and now you know they're behind a number of other players and playing catch up and so you know it's not it's not inconceivable that they could you know become a, a big player in it but uh, they certainly could have done it you know if they would have done it a while ago you know they were in a really good position now they have to kind of play from behind but you know you never know they still yeah. have a really good reputation in the enterprise Go BlackBerry. Come from behind. <laughs> According to the next web, NVIDIA announced the North American launch of its new cloud gaming service called Grid. The service launches November 18th, requires an NVIDIA Shield tablet or handheld, and they recommend a 10 megabit per second internet connection with a ping of 60 milliseconds or less to the Grid servers. Once you have all that in place, though, you can play 20 games at launch, including Batman Arkham City, Borderlands 2, and Darksiders 2, and the service will be free until June 30th. NVIDIA also revealed its Shield tablet will upgrade to Android 5.0 Lollipop on November 18th, coincidentally. Probably not coincidentally at all. Probably by design. <laughs> the Verge drops a little mathematical reality on the Taylor Swift-Spotify grudge match. Spotify's founder, Daniel Ek, said that Swift was projected to earn $6 million on his service before she pulled all her tracks. Then the head of Swift's label, Scott Borchetta, said WTF, or words to that effect, I would imagine, Spotify only gave us $500,000. Well, it turns out both numbers are actually true. Spotify paid Ms. Swift $500,000 for her U.S. streams. Globally, they paid Taylor Swift $2 million. So just cherry-picking a particular market's number. The $6 million that Daniel Eck was talking about uh, was projected earnings over time for the coming year. And granted, they were the most optimistic projection he could use since they gave him the biggest number, but all of those numbers are true. There's nothing, so there's no dispute with Taylor Swift. Just uh. math problems. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 it's spinning statistics, right? Lies, damn lies, and Spotify revenue. As Mark Twain used to say. <laughs> As Mark Twain said, and Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> yeah. Ars Technica reports Judge Royce Lambeth in Washington, D.C. ruled uh, that country code top-level domains cannot be transferred as part of a civil judgment. The plaintiffs in Rubin versus the Islamic Republic of Iran sought to have the top-level domains, not just for Iran, but also Syria and North Korea, transferred in compensation for damages that had been awarded in a previous case brought regarding a 1997 suicide bombing in Jerusalem, which Hamas a Palestinian organization claimed responsibility for. So this is a very complex system of relationships, but essentially the plaintiffs were claiming that Iran backed Hamas, therefore they were responsible, Iran wasn't paying the damages, and therefore they should seize their domain as sort of a seizure of property in lieu of compensation. The court determined that country code top-level domains cannot be conceptualized apart from domain name services, and you can't garnish a service, and therefore they were not allowed to take the domains. But can you imagine if they had? Suddenly you yeah. could just sue in the United States because that's where ICANN is to take any country's domain away. Yeah, it would have been a bad precedent. It would have been a really bad precedent. TechCrunch reports Reddit CEO Yishan Yang has resigned. Investor Sam Altman wrote on his blog today that Yang resigned due to a disagreement about the price and location of a new Reddit office. He was hastened to add that they didn't want him to resign, but he did. COO Ellen Powell has become interim CEO, and co-founder Alexis Ohanian has returned as full-time executive chairman. Microsoft said on Twitter today, quote, we plan to upgrade all Windows Phone 8 devices to Windows 10 in the future. 
So there you go. Upgrade path assured, Windows Phone users. It's good news. Time now for some news from you. These come to, from our subreddit at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Another Jay Martin gave us the Ars Technica story that digital rights activists are continuing to criticize AT&T subsidiary Cricket for preventing email from being protected by Start TLS by removing the Start TLS flag that causes the encryption to take effect. EFF staff technologist Jacob Hoffman Andrews posted Tuesday that ISPs must stop removing customer security measures. Start TLS is used by a lot of people because they believe it'll protect them from things like NSA surveillance. Last week, VPN provider Golden Frog petitioned to the FCC opposing the practice, saying you need to stop them from doing that. A Golden Frog engineer discovered the issue. Uh, and as a reminder, in our October 15th show, listener Patrick Wolf wrote in to note that he had used Cisco ASA firewall software, and an upgrade to that software broke Start TLS in a very similar way. So Patrick speculated maybe that was what was going on with Cricket. Uh, if you had to guess, Jason, I mean, I'm not even going to ask you to guess, but it's either incompetence or maliciousness. Uh, it's got to be one or the other because you shouldn't be removing a start TLS flag, right? Yeah, no, I agree. It's got to be one of those two. Um, you know, people that work on these things are smart. And so, uh, you know, and, and this stuff is, this is heady stuff. So um, I, I, I like to, I just like to give um, people the benefit of the doubt. And so I'm just, I got to think it's a is an accident. Yeah, and maybe incompetence is a little harsh uh, because Peter Wolf is not incompetent. I've been I've been talking with that guy for years, and they were the folks who had an upgrade turn off the Start TLS flag that they didn't know was going to do that. Uh, the question is, you know, when did they know it, and what did they do once they found out? Yeah, uh, exactly. So hopefully, we get a little transparency into that. Yep, exactly. TM204 sent us a BBC article about physicists from the University of Vienna using the twist of a visible light beam to transmit information by laser through the skies above Vienna. Here's how it works. Twisted light photons, or sometimes called orbital angular momentum, that's the twist, uh, can twist like a corkscrew rather than just rotating one direction or another. Researchers set up a green laser in a tower, shown it on a special light modulator, which twisted the beam twice. When the light showed up on a screen three kilometers away, it had a detectable pattern of dots, which the scientists used to transmit black and white images. Now that was just to test if it worked. It could be used for fast transmission of data where separate channels could be sent simultaneously. The results were reported in the new journal of physics. Even if you didn't understand any of that, that <laughs> last sentence, fast data with separate channels sent simultaneously is pretty exciting, right? Yeah. I mean, well, on Tech Republic, there's like about three topics that are destined to everybody will always click on. Um, space, uh, um, lasers, and robots. Yeah. So <laughs> lasers, you know, if it involves lasers and it's going to make your data faster, then absolutely people are going to be interested. I'm interested. It piques my interest immediately. Um, but like the, the and light also, I mean, lasers are light, obviously, as, as the story says, you know, I mean, light is still untapped um, in, in terms of, and there are, um, you know, there is capability there for us to get faster and, and you know, um, really, really awesome stuff. So, uh, yeah, hope to hear more on this one. We need, uh, we need vacuum filled fiber optics so that we can send data at the speed of light. Yes. Vacuum. Yes, please. Easy. Exactly. Easy, right? <laughs> Got that in my backyard. Just to hook up a green laser. <laughs> and that's a look at the headlines. All right. I have to, I, I've been complaining about this all morning to anybody who listened to me. Uh, I think these, these Facebook privacy policy is the most complex story. It's not the most difficult story, but the most complex story we've had in a while. Here's, here's the basics of it. Facebook started their basics page at facebook.com slash about slash basics. Uh, available in 36 languages. They've got 15 animated tutorials, more to come, trying to help people understand how to manage their privacy. Uh, they're also, as we mentioned earlier, proposing a new simplified uh, policy for their terms and conditions, for their data, and for their cookie policy. Uh, within these new terms, they address things like the buy button and how your information is treated there and your credit card being exposed to Facebook, what they're going to do with that information. They have updated policies and more information on location collection as more people use mobile. And they're asking for you to read through this stuff and give them comments and feedback over the next week, November 20th. Now, Lindsay, I know you were looking at it earlier. Uh, do you think a week is enough? 
Probably not. Uh, 15 animated videos they were talking about, I mean, not going to happen for most people. <laughs> so I don't, I don't really see, even through all this, I don't see people changing their behavior based on what they, what they read. You know, they're still going to use Facebook for what they use Facebook for. Yeah, it's kind of an FAQ situation, so I suppose you don't need to watch all 15 necessarily, uh -huh. but I, I actually made the notes here of all the different parts of the basics. So under privacy basics, they have three parts, what others see about you, how others interact with you, and what you see. And under the what others see about you, you can post deleting post profile, friend list, search, likes and comments, tagging, account deactivation, and deletion. It's freaking complicated in there. This is most people are going to look at this and their eyes are going to glaze over and they'll be like, forget it. I don't, I don't even I don't even want to know. The problem is, if I know the question I have, yes, I'm probably going to be able to find it here. And it's nicely laid out. And I want to give them credit for that. Like it's, it's, it's certainly easy to get around in and it's written in plain language. But as far as like exposing people to things that they need to know that they don't need know that they need to know, this is not going to do it. <laughs> Yeah. I, you know, the funny thing is, I thought I was thinking about this, and I was thinking they probably had a people of like a team of like 20 to 30 people that went off and, you know, made this thing. And they probably had this mandate of like, look, this is one of the things we get the most criticism for, and let's like make this easier for people to understand. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that, um, you know, kind of what you, know, you were saying is that I, I don't know that it's going to change people's behavior yet. Because there's no pain, there, there's not like a pain for you know um, privacy, um, uh, yeah, for it being divulged. And so until there's some tangible pain, I mean, maybe people worry a little bit about um, you know their, um, their their credit cards or you know those kinds of things being taken. But people don't you know have this this overriding sense of uh, fear around privacy that makes them change their behavior yet. Kind of like Lynn was saying. So. Um, I think until there is that, I, like you said, Tom, I, I applaud it, and I think that they're, it's good that they're trying to make people um, understand it. But at the end of the day, it's still supremely complicated, kind of like the Facebook site itself when you go to change your settings, you know? Like, yeah, you can change the settings on a lot of things, but finding it is really tough. And so, you know, Facebook's still having a, a tough time um, with, with this idea of making things simple, making things simple for a sort of average user. And, uh, and, and it takes a lot of sort of discipline to do that and they're struggling with it. Yeah, the data policy, they did a really good job of making it very easy to read. The problem there isn't that. I mean, I want to give I want to give them full marks like good job taking the initiative, trying to make it simpler, trying to improve it, easier to understand, plain language, all of that. Great job. The problem is it's still very complex. And I don't know if I blame Facebook for that. Terms and conditions are very often complex. They're complex issues because you have to protect yourself in so many different ways. So I'm not sure that anybody could have done better, but I'm not also not sure how much of an effect it may end up having. It does seem uh, because in this basics area, they really hammer this home that getting people to adjust their advertising preferences is an important part of this. They're saying, hey, we know you're concerned about your data being shared with advertisers. There was the Pew Research report out earlier this week saying that people are more concerned with what advertisers know about them than they're actually concerned about what the government knows about them. Yeah. Uh, and they're saying, look, they're not telling you you can turn it off, but they're saying you can control your with, with these preferences. How and they're they're talking about expanding it to other countries. These preferences are coming to Australia, Canada, France, Germany, Ireland, the UK. However, you can't opt out from the Facebook panel. You have to go somewhere else to do it. And really, the only thing you're controlling on that Facebook ad preferences panel is whether your actions on Facebook get paired with ads for friends. You can say yes or no. <laughs> yeah, not much. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's not much that you can do that that's going to make a difference. I think they could have boiled it down further, honestly. I think they did a good job, but I, th I think they should have gone further. Like you said, there's three different policies. Yeah, there's still too many steps yeah, they, that you have to go to. Yeah, yeah. I think they got to keep trying on this. Well, if you're interested, if you're like, wait a minute, I didn't realize Facebook allowed other people to track me through Facebook. Here's how you, you get out of that. You visit the Digital Advertising Alliance. Uh, and you opt out, uh, they, you can go to about.ads.info slash choices in the U.S., youradchoices.ca slash choices in Canada, 
or your online choices.eu in Europe. And, and give Facebook credit on their advertising preferences panel. They link to all of those. Uh, yeah. And then for mobile, you just got to turn them off in your settings. For Android, you go to accounts, Google ads, and then opt out of interest-based ads. In iOS, you go to settings, privacy, advertising, and select limit ad tracking which doesn't sound like you're turning it off. It sounds like you're limited, but... Yeah, yeah, true. So good step. They just got to take it for there. CNBC, uh, Lindsay, you found this earlier. Uh, CNBC reported Facebook is the company that most concerns people in regard to collection of personal data. That was a poll conducted for CNBC by SurveyMonkey, and they, they did about 546 people uh, randomly surveyed. So maybe that's what Facebook's trying to combat here. I mean, we all say that Facebook is the great privacy threat, a lot, uh, and they're they're trying to combat that. Do you think it succeeds? I don't know. It's it's funny because if you look at your news feed, you would not think that anyone has a concern for for privacy or what they're putting on there. You know, so um, I, the, again, kind of back to the behavior change. You know, it's good on their part, but um, obviously people are worried about it. Um, I still don't think that they'll change their behavior because they love Facebook and that's why they use it. Yeah. Um, to share that kind of stuff. So. Well, I'll give I'll give half marks. I'll I'll give Facebook a good job for at least making it easier and putting more things in front of people. But the system is still complex. It's it's too there's there's they they've still got too much benefit to expose people to make it like a one deal thing. Like turn off all my privacy. Give me that. Give me that button. Like not turn off all my privacy privacy, but turn it on. Protect me from yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, complete privacy. Yep. Yeah. Turn off is the default actually. All right, let's look at the calendar. Tomorrow, November 14th, Netflix uh, cuts off open API access. Uh, there's a few things out there that we're still using it. Uh, most of them have been wind, wound down. Samsung Galaxy Note Edge will be released in the United States tomorrow. at and is going to charge you $400 on contract, more than $900 off contract. That's more than like a 4 gigabyte RAM Intel i3 laptop. Uh, Sprint and T-Mobile will start carrying the Galaxy Note Edge for $800 off contract. U.S. Cellular and Verizon have not yet announced pricing details. And uh, Sony's PlayStation TV available in Europe. PlayStation TV being the essentially the Vita in a box that you could connect to your television. Our pick of the day comes from KRV Hill, who points out charity season is here. And KRV Hill says, I wanted to pick my favorite Desert Bus for Hope at DesertBus.org, a comedy troupe playing the world's most boring video game for Child's Play charity. It's in its eighth year and keeps getting bigger. If you prefer different games, check the schedule at Child'sPlayCharity.org to see a list of other webathons coming in the next months. Uh, but yeah, if you don't know about Desert Bus, do you guys know Desert Bus? No. Uh-uh. This was part of an unreleased game from Penn & Teller in the 90s, Penn and Teller's Smoke and Mirrors. It was supposed to come to Sega in April 1995, and they were going to do PC and 3DO versions. That's how old it is. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, it included a lot of, like, trick games, and one of them was Bus, which was a game where you drove a bus at 45 miles an hour from Tucson to Las Vegas in real time <laughs> with no passengers. Wow. When you got to wow. Vegas, you got one point, and then you could turn the bus around and drive back to Tucson in real time. The fun part of the game is that the bus has a, a, a misaligned steering wheel, so it kind of pulls to the right. So you can't just leave the joystick in position. You have to continually adjust the steering so that the bus stays on the road, because if the bus goes off the road, a tow truck shows up and starts towing it back to your, your starting point in real time. <laughs> Oh, man. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. I think the only event is a bug hits the windshield halfway between the cities. <laughs> Do you get points for the bugs? How many bugs? You? I don't think so. No, you only get a point for showing up in the city. Anyway, so the comedy troupe uh, does this because it's the world's most boring video game, uh, and they're trying to raise money for charity. And then they have they they do a lot of riffing and talking and having fun while they play it. And then you can sit there and, and actually watch without having to play it yourself and see <laughs> what it's awesome. like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, KRV Hill, uh, for sending that along. You can send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com, and you can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. By the way, BioCow says it pulls to the left, not Ooh, the right. Not that the is left. my mistake. Gotcha. I obviously have not played enough Desert Bus, <laughs> and I won't ever play enough Desert Bus. 
<laughs> Our messages of the day. First one comes from Max. A uh, little comment on the Amazon Echo and voice-enabled computers. I was one of the Kickstarter backers for the Ubi and have had it for a while now. Uh, it does a similar thing with voice activation. You don't have to touch it. You just tell it. He says, sadly, it has not been what I hoped for. Uh, not that it, ha it has anything wrong with the Ubi in particular, but since I always listen to music or podcasts, it prevents me from talking to the Ubi. I do think most people have some noise around them, and if you're not alone, you will have to tell the people around you to be quiet for you to be able to talk to the computer. It also tends to go off every once in a while due to something being said in my room by someone or the TV. There's also the issue of the distance to the mic when you move around in your home or office. I think that the future of this is in wearables, since both mic and speakers need to be close to be useful. Shouting or hearing responses all over the house is not practical. If you're not alone, Jarvis is what we all want, but I have a hard time believing it being possible without having microphones and speakers installed everywhere. And maybe it also needs to recognize who is allowed to give it commands. Just some thoughts from someone with an experience with the Ubi uh, thank you, Max. I appreciate that sort of report from the field. Yeah. Amazon says that it's beam forming is going to help with this, but I can't, I mean, I've had problems with the Xbox same way. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll, this is again, getting at some of this uh, next generation interface and living room stuff. And this is, I mean, as we think about, you know, interfaces and what they look like and where they go. I mean, this is where the rubber meets the road on a lot of this stuff. So it's, it's this is great feedback. This is the stuff that all these people that are working on this, these kind of problems, you know, need to be thinking about and need to be realizing. And I'm sure some of them do in the labs and they're testing, but you know, the best way to really get it is to hear users, you know, having their issues and, and then, um, you know, solving those. So, um, good stuff. There's a, yeah, there's been a lot of studies done on mimicking the human ability to pick out a voice in a noisy room. So that yeah. needs to make more uh, progress, I guess. Yeah. Got an email from Steve Boland in St. Paul, Minnesota. I assume it's Minnesota. He didn't actually say. Could be St. Paul anywhere, actually. Uh, and he was responding to our pick of the day about Amazon Smile, which allows part of your purchases to go to charity. Steve says that 0.5% donation for most nonprofits won't add up to much money, but it's important to think beyond just the cash that gives that is given for charities when these opportunities come up. Nonprofits may do financially better as an Amazon affiliate, but the Smile program offers a chance to get introduced to new audiences if they're Smile info is correct. He says, however, many charities already in the database have out-of-date information, and this can be confusing should anyone stumble across them when exploring the idea of Smile. Community organizations which have paid attention to keeping their public data up to date will do better with the PR value of asking for donations than perhaps they would with the small percentage of stales. He says, I do this stuff for a living. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Steve. I appreciate uh, uh, the update on that. That's really cool. This is funny. I, I sort of Amazon needs to do a little bit better job of this because I have one. Kiva is the one that I have chosen for mine on this. Yeah. And a great charity. And um, but it's like it prompts me to to actually use it. I can't just tell it. Oh yeah, everything I do just use Kiva. You know? Right. It's always like, would you like to use Smile this time? Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed and then that. You have to go to that and then order your thing there. And so um, yeah. I know Facebook or Amazon's not. Um, you know, incented to do it that way, but I wish they would just let you say, okay, yeah, opt in. I want to do this, apply this to all of my purchases or something. Anyway. Now, uh, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I said, oh, anyway, that's an Amazon problem. It's yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, Rob wrote in regarding uh, people talking about the fact that their voice activated assistance may accidentally go off, as was mentioned in the earlier email. Rob says, I'm a couple of days behind here, but regarding the hey, and I'm going to put a pause in Siri conundrum. I feel slightly smug every time you mention it because I have my system language set to French and it therefore doesn't activate Siri. You can ask Patrick Beja how to do so if you like, but my suggestion to circumvent the issue is simply learn French. Bonus, then you can listen to the Rendezvous Tech as well. <laughs> so there you go. Problem solved. Problem solved. Until everyone learns French... And then everyone's talking in French on their podcast, and then it sets off your thing again. It's a never-ending circle. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for writing. Uh, thanks to you guys, Jason Heiner and Lindsay Gilpin. Uh, the title of the book they're working on is called Follow the Geeks, and you can follow it at followthegeeksbook.com. The Twitter account is at followthegeeks. Facebook.com slash followthegeeksbook as well. We'll have all that information in the show notes. Uh, I, I know you're in the early stages, but what can you tell us about it? 
Yeah, I mean, we, you know, the it's a book that we've been working on um, as a way to introduce people to some really great uh, digital entrepreneurs who are thinking about work in different ways. It's really about the future of work mm -hmm. um, and the ways that people are doing it. And we have a few things that we're kind of doing a little bit differently, too. Yeah, we are serial publishing it, so one chapter at a time, um, releasing them for free online for a few weeks. And then um, after that, it goes away, promote the whole ebook to buy at the end, where we'll have some extra stuff um, at the end of each chapter, insights from the audience, because we're also crowdfunding it to kind of build an audience and um, and try to get some feedback on make the book better. Yeah, so very similar to, you know, some of the things that you do on the show, involving yeah. your audience in the show, and, you know, nobody's really done that with books, and mm -hmm. so, uh, or, or very much, and so we want to give it a, give it a try. So try. Yeah, I love the sort of like halfway between investigative long-form journalism and book. You're, you're sort of trying yeah. to take the best parts of both worlds there. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Well, check it out, folks. Follow the geeksbook.com is the website. Uh, thank you guys uh, for stopping by. This is really thank cool. You. Thanks for having us. Love it. Always love it. Thanks to our 4,580 patrons uh, who have helped us out as well. We appreciate every single one of you bosses. Thanks to all the folks who've given uh, on PayPal. Some of you one-time donations. That's awesome. Some of you have even give uh, subscription repeated donations. You guys are just as awesome as well. Uh, you can find out all the ways to support the show. If you get a little value from the show, all we ask is if you can spare it, give a little value back, dailytechnewsshow.com slash donate. And don't forget, producer Jenny needs help. She's building the year-end best of show. Uh, and so if you can't give in any other way, help her out with this. Uh, she'd like your opinion on the best moments of Daily Tech News Show so far this year. There's a Google Doc, bit.ly slash DTNS best of. Just go in, add the date of your favorite moment and an approximate time that it happened in the show. In fact, using the YouTube video for reference is probably the best way to do that. Uh, or if you don't have time for that, just email us your favorite moment, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Don't forget, you can have a voice in what stories we cover at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can give us a call, 512-59-DAILY, 512-593-2459. Our show's live at alphageekradio.com, Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. And our website is dailytechnewsshow.com. We'll be back tomorrow with Molly Wood and Len Peralta illustrating the show. See you then. Done. Cool. All right. That was great. Good job, you guys. Thank you. Hey. Awesome. Thank you. See you in three seconds. I realized that um, yesterday I was moving some stuff around for a shoot, and I accidentally bumped my headphone level. And so the whole show, I was like, God, they sound a little low. And I realized uh, that was, that was why. Oh, technology. What oh, might technology. Adjust for us on, to all of our needs and preferences. Yeah, seriously. Come on, mixer. I need a smart mixer. A smart mixer, exactly. A self-sensing mixer. Tune to your own eardrum. Yep. So I'm going to uh, keep the stream on and while I, while I do, the, uh, do the editing. And you guys can hang out and chat with folks or not. Uh, yeah. Totally up to you. Cool. I think Jenny might be showing the cable guy around. She hasn't hung up, but she hasn't come back yet. So that's probably what's going on. Oh, uh, nice. And at showbot.replex.org, if you're watching live, is where we're voting on uh, the title. Am Amazon buries the hashette. Oh, <laughs> so nice. many levels of meaning. Thank you, Big Jim. That one's good. Uh, JB Hanna has lies, damn lies, and Spotify revenue. BioCow has come on data. Let's do the twist. Oh, that's good. Uh, Facebook exposes its privates. <laughs> I love and hate that one at the same time. Uh, it's just because it's Facebook makes it a little creepy. Uh, yeah, maybe come on data. Let's do the twist. Come on, come on data. data. I don't yeah. want to get a takedown notice of yours, Tom. <laughs> All right.
All right, yeah, uh, do that one. Usually uh, Jenny does the uh, title selection portion of the show. I'm doing double duty. Ah, oh, okay. gotcha. I would think that would be an M dash, not a uh, ellipses on come on data. Let's do the twist. In all cases, yeah, we choose I'm, the M dash. We believe in the M dash. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Overuse it. Are you with me? Yes. <laughs> Chat room's on top of it as always. <laughs> Trying to find the beginning of the show is, is sometimes particularly fun. That's great that Molly's on tomorrow. Oh, Molly on tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. You, you can bet we're going to be talking some net neutrality. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, wow. I'm way, I'm way far off from the beginning. There we go. Done. I found it. I was looking in the wrong part of the file. Yeah, it's been too long. It hasn't actually been that long, but it's always been too long since Molly's been on. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys have seen Len Peralta on the show. He's on every Friday, and he'll do a live drawing of one of the topics and then make it available as a print in his store afterwards. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. Very, very cool. I love it that he's willing to continue to do that. So, because he's such, a, he's so good. He is good. I like, I like his stuff a lot. Have you seen I'll his see. comic? Um, which? The the one that just came out called Exterminate that he did with Bill Corbett. No, no. It's really good. Okay, oh, wait, that's that not up. the Bill Corbett one. Sorry, it's not. It's a different author. But, um, but yeah, it's about. Looking uh, that up right here. Yeah, a guy who helps uh, eliminate your nightmares. He goes into your dreams and eliminates your nightmares. <laughs> Exterminate. Here it is. Interesting. Hi. Oh, you're back. Woo. That was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> My sole job was to connect person who knows things to person who knows things. <sighs> and achievement unlocked. Achievement unlocked. <laughs> I was like, you people need me? They're like, no. Good. See ya. Whew. So uh, we did the title, and it's going to be Come On Data, Let's Do the Twist. Oh, that's awesome. Classic. There were a lot of good ones. Yeah, there were several really good, a good ones. good day. There were well, at least... Three like killer titles in this, yep. which is funny. usually you have to you have to scrape a little bit, but yeah. We got a smart team in in the title department. Smartest <laughs> audience in the world. Yeah. Nice. So what are we talking about? Um, <laughs> this <It was> swept. <laughs> amazing <laughs> baseball bat that I keep <gasps> next to my uh, desk was given to me by the Tech Republic team nice. back when I was at Buzz Out Loud. It says, uh, well, it wasn't the Tech Republic team at the time. It was to the BOL crew from CNET Louisville. Oh, Louisville. That's Louisville. awesome. Well, I, have a bat. I have a bat that size from the World Baseball Classic, the first one. No kidding. Those are cool bats. <laughs> yeah. The Louisville special. Louisville. Louisville, Louisville slugger. Louisville. Oh. Well. Louisville, exactly. Mm. They, I'm, not, I'm not from there, so they. Oh, I'm always told I, not. They can always tell I'm not from there because I put too many syllables in it. Yeah. <laughs> really, the fewer syllables, it's it's about half a syllable. Really, it's like Louisville. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I tend to do a Louisville, or Louisville. You're like, no, I must put the. Syllables. I, I, exactly. I gotta add that extra pause in the middle. That's uh where I'm from. The state, I L L I N, uh O I S is pronounced with an E, 
Illinois. Illinois. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I basically, had to cure letter myself L, of that. Letter N, and the Jewish exclamation "oi, Illinois." Yeah, I mean it is properly pronounced Illinois, but we always said Illinois. All right. Sometimes you can play Desert Bus in a browser, so if you can't reach me, <laughs> you'll be on the road to Vegas. Nice. Desertbus-game.org. It looks exactly how you described it. Oh, it's the best thing ever. Wait till that bug splat hits halfway through, about five hours <laughs> in. You'll go nuts. That is awesome. <laughs> I can't believe there's a chance I just might have real internet at the end of today, maybe. You've been doing a fair approximation of it. Yeah, and I mean, it's been hey, very impressive to me, by the it way. Has, it has left me super duper impressed with mobile data. Mm -hmm. of this specific company whose mobile data I am using. I can't lie. Wow. It's just pricey. Yeah, well. You can't do this show every <laughs> yeah. day on it. Yeah. If I lived in South Korea, Sure. Uh, sure. Yeah, I did. I did straight up go over um, the limit of forty gigabytes today. Ouch! <sighs> just in time, or just not in time, internet yeah. delivery. It's okay. And then you have to do that math in your head because one extra gigabyte is fifteen dollars. Extra gigabyte. Right. And so you're like, okay, do I pay that like two or three times before I upgrade to the next plan, which is like a hundred dollars more? It's pretty and then as soon as you started talking about that, you started breaking up, by the way. Hilariously. <laughs> Perfect. It's like it's like they know. They're like, she's gonna start saying something. Throttle her, throttle her. Or maybe you're going over the limit as we speak. And that's what it sounds like. It's like bumps in the road. <laughs> Speed bump. Your video still looks good. But I can't hear you anymore. Yeah. Not a word. Nope. Oh, there that? we go. Yeah, that's oh, better. The, the blue icicle was sagging a little, Tom. Uh, and I had to help it out. That's such a sad winter story. <laughs> sad little The loneliest icicle. icicle was sagging. The loneliest icicle sagging off the front porch. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think everything uploaded properly. It's amazing. Could it be true? Is the link live? So as soon as you get done, is the link the sure. video embed is live immediately after we're done. It's very impressive. Uh, and the, um, the archive.org and SoundCloud links are now live, but I don't put them in the feed until I've double checked to make sure that. Oh, that they sound every, all the yeah, make sure I put up the right. Oh, 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 I'm glad I checked because that's not the right file. <laughs> I actually fooled myself into thinking I had uploaded to archive.org and I hadn't. And then, yeah, as soon as I verify it's, that it, it's all right, I put it in the feed and it's published right away. Nice. Is it on the DTNS Twitter? Does it show up on there right away? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think the blog is cross-posted to there. I mean, it, the blog is the, is the originator of it all. Cool. I'll just I'll grab it from there. It's gonna be there shortly. Nice. Some hold music. Hold music for you here. Oh, is that a Sports Flash? Yeah, that's what I thought it was. 
1059 the cat. Oh, no, you mean 790 Dragon, Dragon Sports Talk Radio. The sports Talk Radio. <laughs> Nice. <sighs> All right. I think I'm out of the post now. I'm going to put the show notes in the post like an efficient machine. Yep. Okay. So the blog post is live, Jason. Yeah. I'm out of the post, Jenny. And we're done. Thanks, everybody. Bye, video people. We always say goodbye to the video people first. Bye, video people. It's not because we don't love you.